are good, your mercy endures forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Bless his name. Bless his name. Yes, we're ready. We're ready. We're ready. Hallelujah. We thank God for this Pentecostal Sunday. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, let's put our hands together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's stand in the sanctuary. Give God your full worship if you can. Oh, it was early one morning, just about the break of day. Jesus came and touched me, washed all my sins away. I started running and I started shouting. I had no time for doubting. Oh, I, I got nothing but the Holy Ghost. Oh, 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 it was early one morning, just about the break of day. Jesus came and touched me, washed all my sins away. I started running and I started shouting. I had no time for doubting. Oh, I, I got nothing but the Holy Ghost. Wait, yo, oh, oh, the Holy Ghost. Save me, the Holy Ghost. Set me free, the Holy Ghost. Change my life, my life. The Holy Ghost. me out, me out. Oh, I, I got nothing but the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Well, it was early one morning. Just about the break of day, yeah. Jesus came and touched me, and He washed all my sins away. I started running, I started shouting. I had no time for doubting. Oh, I, I got nothing but the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, yeah, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. Save me, save me, the Holy Ghost. Set me free, set me free. Oh, change my life, change my life. The Holy Ghost. Well, the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Save me. Save me. The Holy Ghost. Set me free. Set me free. Oh, the Holy Ghost. Changed my life. And it brought me out. Brought me out. Oh, I, I got nothing but the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Well, the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. It was moving. Moving down the muscle. Oh, the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. It was moving. Nothing but the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, all over me. Moving down in my soul. Lift up my hands and they look the new. Holy Ghost. Hey, I lift up my feet in my and soul. they did too. The Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Moving down in my soul. All over me. The Holy Ghost. Yeah, yeah. Moving down in my soul. Hey, yeah. The Holy Ghost.
name, and we bless his name, and we glorify him. Oh, the Holy Ghost. We need the Holy Ghost, and we praise God. Hallelujah. Hey. Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands and thank the Lord. Y'all need to lift your hands and thank the Lord. Hallelujah. We serve a good God. And yes, down through history, when it first fell, when Jesus departed from here and let his disciples know, I'm not leaving you by yourself. I'm sending you a comforter. But you got to wait on him. And he sent them where to go. And he said, wait. And we praise God for it on today. And here we are from when he rose on Resurrection Day, way there as we have in April, leading up to 50 days today. And it's just a beautiful thing. I believe God's going to fill people all over the globe today. Amen. Yes, Lord, and we praise the Lord as we're going to enter into our prayer today. Believe God, we're focusing on the Holy Ghost. And if you get the Holy Ghost, other things can happen. And so we believe God as we sing a little of this praise. Yes, 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 yes. Oh. Bring us together one more time. Glory, glory. Thanking you for this Pentecostal day when they all were gathered together in one room on one accord. Thank you, Jesus. Praising Holy. you, lifting you up. Waiting Holy. on you to Thank send your you, Holy Lord. Spirit. Hallelujah. Mm. Stretch out your mighty hands on today, Lord. Move by your Thank power. You. Thank you. Thank you. God, we thank you, God. Hallelujah. For bringing us here one more time. One more time. This is the day that you have made. Yeah. Mm. We are rejoicing and being rejoicing. glad in it. Glad about it. Lead us and guide us your way. So glad. Not our so way. Glad. So glad. Your way. Hallelujah. Not our will, but your will. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. We want to open up our minds to understand Thank your you. word. Those that are lost and don't know you. Bring them to repentance, oh God. Oh God, oh God. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Oh God. God, and as your word go forth on this day, let it bring joy to our hearts. Thank you, Lord. We know that you can do all things. Nothing is too hard for you. Nothing. You can speak the word and the word only. And it shall be done. Shall. So we thank you. Thank you. We glorify Hallelujah. you. We Glory. magnify you. In Glory Jesus' name. Glorify your name. Thank oh God. God. Amen and amen. amen. We bless your name. And we praise your name. Come on, let's clap our hands and praise the Lord. Amen. And as we're continuing to stand, we're going to um, 
have our scripture reading by Minister Glenell. He's coming. And after which we'll have Sister Regina, uh, Sister Richardson. She's coming with our greetings for today. Let's say amen. amen. Praise the Lord, saints. Lord. I'll be reading Acts 2, 1 through 4. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Blessed are the hearers and doers of the word. I bring you greetings from the Holy Way Church of God in Christ, where our pastor is Bishop Charles Naughton and our co-pastor, First Lady Cecilia Naughton. First, let me take this opportunity to thank our Almighty Father, who is in heaven, for giving us the gift of life and allowing me to welcome you to our church, where we believe in Christian living, pure and with purpose. We come together here in the sanctuary, together in this building, to worship and bring glory unto him. Some of us have had a tiresome week, but we want to thank our loving God who sent his son, who shed innocent blood for making it possible for us to be here today. And it is by his mercies he has guided us protected us, and has provided us yes. with his mercy to give him praise yes. and worship. Yes. Allow the Holy Spirit to teach you, guide you, fill you, yes. and please feel welcome and know that God loves you. Greetings this morning, and we just thank God. Amen. And we just, let's just give the Lord another hand clap. Amen. Because he's so worthy. He's so worthy. And a lot of people say, well, they always saying about clap your hands. But see, I learned years ago, when you're clapping your hands for the Lord, you're baffling the devil. You're actually battling with that enemy, when you clap your hands. You know, the world sometimes, see the world, the devil has them popping their fingers, you see, that's one thing. But see over here, the Bible said, clap your hands. I didn't say it, the Bible said, clap your hands, all ye people. It didn't say pop your finger, all ye people, but it said clap your hands. That's the way we do it over here. And so we're just praising God this morning. And oh, God's going to do great things today. I believe God's going to do great things today. Someone's on the brink of their miracle. And Bishop's going to come after I just sing a little bit of this song today. Creating me. Creating me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This is a good time to get your praise in your spirit and say, Lord, do it for me, do it for me, do it for me. I'll need it today. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord. We just bless his holy name. Oh, we thank you. Oh, we invite you in today. Oh, we bless your name. Search my mind and search my heart. Search my spirit, Lord. I want to make a brand new start. If you find anything in me that should not be, Take it out, oh, and strengthen me. It's my desire to live right. Search my mind and search, search my spirit, Lord. Spirit, oh God, I want to make a brand new start. If you find, find, find anything in me, anything in me that should not be, take it out, Lord. I need you to take it out, take it out, take it out, and strengthen me.
the sanctuary. Come, Bishop. Amen. Amen. Oh, oh, oh. Make me run. Everybody give the Lord just a great big praise offer. Hallelujah. Come on, tell him thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, praise him. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. You're worthy, oh God. You're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. You are worthy. That the Lord has been good to you. And you just want to take a few minutes and say, Lord, I thank you. Come on, give him praise this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. We, honor you. we have a lot to be thankful for. Let me just share this with you before you take your seat. We the church. Amen. Our church, we have property next door. And on the the holiday last Monday, and there was a fire in the house, and the Lord woke them up, amen, and they were able to get out of the house, and nobody got injured, Hallelujah. nobody had to go to the hospital, Hallelujah. amen, smoke all through the house, God got them out safe. Hallelujah! You, you are the only way we could be grieving this morning That's or sad. It. That's it. For our tenants. Hallelujah! They could have lost their life. What God? And a fire. Yes. But God spared them all to get out. Now that, that the, the building, the building is damaged. Nobody yes. can live in the building. But watch this here before we, I said the building is damaged. But the soul are saved. Right. You ought to praise God, amen. Hallelujah! Hey, because we always going to have some things in our life that we can complain about because the devil is always busy. Amen. How many know that? Amen. The devil is always busy. Isn't that right? But we, don't, we don't praise him because what he is doing, but when we learn in spite of and just give God the praise, we have to be like the the lady was in pain, sick and in pain. And 
and, and they, they asked her, why are you praising God when you're in such pain in your body? She said, I'm praising because I can feel the pain. Good Lord! She said, I can still feel the pain. I I'm still alive. Good Lord, thank you, God! I don't know about you, but I feel the Holy Ghost here this morning. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is so good to, to us, and I'm so thankful for each of you. Amen. I praise God for each of you. I believe the Lord is restoring that that the canker worm and the enemy have destroyed and taken away. And Amen. I believe God is restoring. And as He restores, let's learn to rejoice. Yes. Learn to praise him. Amen. Learn to be glad for what the Lord is doing. Amen. And just say, he's not finished with me yet. Right. Not finished with me yet. Amen. We're so thankful again for uh, each of you and those, amen, that join with us on each Sunday. We give God praise for you. I want to share a word this morning. I think this is, we're celebrating. How many know what this day is that we're celebrating? How many know? I heard somebody say something. Hey Amen. This is Pentecost. Hey Amen. Pentecost. Praise God. Pentecost. What, 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 what are you talking about, Pentecost? Amen. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Yes. That, that, I didn't want to just come out and say that. I really trying to get you to think, just think about the Holy Ghost. It hit your mind. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Amen. Uh, people have been asking about the Holy Ghost and question about the Holy Ghost and Amen. It's a, you, you need the Holy Ghost not to be to get to heaven or not to be saved. Amen. But you need the Holy Ghost to stay down here. You need the Holy Ghost to, amen, that will keep you while you're down here. So I thank God for his keeping power. Holy Ghost power. Day of Pentecost, amen. All on one accord. And here come the Holy Ghost. Because we need the Holy Ghost. Amen. And we thank God and we celebrate that. But I want to talk a little bit about from the book of Galatian this morning. If you return in your Bible to Galatian, the fifth chapter. Amen. The fifth chapter in Galatians. And we're going to read a few verses here. Uh, praise the Lord. Galatians. See my page and everything kind of jamming together. I mean, but I'll get there in a minute, all right? Uh, I got it now. All right, now. The writing there of the Apostle Paul. How many know that the Lord is good? Amen. I said the Lord is good, isn't he? 
all of the time. God is good. To us. Amen. We we thank God for his goodness. Amen. His loving kindness and his tender mercy and all that the Lord has done for us. Amen. Over the last couple of years, he's been extremely good because he has kept us in the midst of a pandemic. The fifth chapter of Galatians and a uh, couple of the verses here, I believe I want to read verse 5 and 6. It reads, says, for we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. Galatians chapter 5 verses, I said verses 6 and I'm going to I'm trying to get me a little confused this morning, but chapter 5 verses 16 verses 16, alright? I'm going to read verses 16 and 17. This I say then to walk in the spirit praise the Lord and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh number 17 for the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit lusts against the flesh and these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the thing that ye would. I really want you to think about that. You know, if I had to reread re, re that, I would probably, you know, and trying to break it down, I would probably say the flesh and the spirit, they at war with each other. That they are contrary. They they don't they don't get along. They don't get along. You ever met anybody you don't get along with? They don't get along with each other. The flesh. But it's a funny thing. They're in the same body. The spirit of God is in the body. Amen. And then the flesh is the flesh the body. Yet they don't get along. That's amazing, isn't it? The flesh, the flesh lust is against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh indeed and they are contrary the one to the other so that you cannot do the thing that you want to do I, I will purpose to do certain things I want to do certain things I, God has a plan for me but because of the flesh and the spirit within me got a war going on I can't do what he asked me to do. That's amazing. One of the greatest problems of people today is, is it's not about accepting Jesus as the Savior. You go to revivals and you go to church and you ask for an altar call or you people will get convicted after they hear the word of God and they'll come to the altar and they'll cry out Tears streaming down on their cheek and cry out, Lord, save me. Lord, deliver me. And, and, and you can easily get that to happen many times. And that's not really the problem of people really accepting Jesus. But the problem is remaining steadfast after they leave. The easy part, because so many times they're emotion at that moment, they're preaching, preaching. People go like, oh yeah, I'm gonna give up my, I'm gonna give up my my, my line, I'm gonna give up my bad habits. Like, oh Jesus, forgive me. I'm gonna give up my boyfriend, and I'm gonna give up my girlfriend, I'm gonna give up doing wrong, I'm gonna give up cussing when I get mad. But that was easy during the service time. But come Monday, come Monday, you 
Before you know it, you say every time you, you cussing and you're doing the same thing. Come Monday, can you stay steadfast? Can you remain steadfast on Monday? Let me back up a little bit. Can you remain steadfast in the parking lot? After you get out of that church service. After the music done stop playing and the organ done stop teaching and the preacher done stop saying, you know, preaching and, and you get in the parking lot and somebody done, done strash your car. Somebody done hit your door. Can you still remain steadfast? And you know you just took it and got it polished yesterday too. And already a month behind on your notes and it'll hit your car. Can you still remain? That's why we need the Holy Ghost. Yes. Come on, say, I need the Holy Ghost. Yes. The writer, Apostle Paul, the writer said, you have been called to freedom, but you don't use your freedom to satisfy the flesh. And let me just kind of explain that. Because the Lord has freed you. And we should not use our freedom to satisfy the desires of the flesh. So we, we, we're still not free because we should be obligated to the Spirit of God. Even though he free you out of over here, you still should be obligated to God. You're not just there to use your freedom to say, I'm going to do anything and act anyway. A lot of people do that. And I mean, uh, I, I'm a look tradition, and I, I'm not, I, I realize that I'm not the, 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 the new generation. And, 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 and there are some things that I, I'm just not really ready to accept. And they're not saying things. Don't, don't get me wrong. I want y'all to listen to me on this here. Uh, I, I would never put nobody in hell for, for wearing Levi's that, that looked like they got, just got out of a bear fight. You know, just torn out the knees and torn out the back and the threads hanging down and I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say you going to hell for that. I'm not gonna put you in hell for that. I'm not gonna even put you in hell for sitting up in the church with your cap on backwards. You know, I'm not gonna put you in the hell for that. But what I am gonna say, my mama, my mama worked too hard trying to sew patches on my clothes and trying to make us look decent to go to school for me to jump up now and pay two or three hundred dollars to look raggedy. When she paid all that money trying to make me look presentable. I have, I, and then again, I have enough respect that I just don't want to look anyway in God's house. I, I would not wear my pajamas with the church. Some of you might do that. Amen. I, I, I want to come to church. I want to look like I belong to the church. You, you know, we, we want to look like you. You go into the armed forces. You go in the armed forces, you put on a uniform. Isn't that right? I just want to look decent in God's house to represent him. Now, I'm not trying to say that people are going to hell or doing that, but I'm just trying to say me. I just want to respect the house of God and respect and look like that I am who I am. I say I am a, a bishop in the church. I'm a preacher in the church, a pastor in the church. I just want to look like that. Amen. Amen. And sometimes we will take our liber liberty because we said it ain't no sin. Everything that's not a sin is not good for us. Are y'all with me? There's something that's not a sin to eat, but if you eat it, you're going to be sick all night. Just because it's not a sin, you don't want to eat it. Oh, y'all didn't get that one, did you? You ought to stay away from it just for your health. They're talking about, well, you know, uh, uh, Joe, they, they, they eat three big onions at night and go to bed. Let them do that, but you do it, you're going to be messed up. 
You can't do what everybody else do. Amen. Amen. The resurrection of Jesus set us all of us free. We are free in the Lord. We are not bound to Satan. We accept Jesus as our personal Savior. We are, we, 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 amen. He come into our life and it set us free. We are not bound by the, the law. We are not bound by Satan. Amen. That's what Jesus did. He, he rose from the grave. And when he rose from the grave, if we go back to that uh, Easter Sunday that we call the day that he rose from the grave. When he rose from the grave, we didn't see a lot of changes on the surface of life at the time that he rose. And what I mean by that, look at Caesar, Caesar the, the, the Augusta. He was still ruling Rome. When Jesus rose from the grave, he didn't take Caesar out of power. He was still ruling. Pilate, Pilate the one that washed his hand and said, I have no fault, I see no fault in him. He was still the governor. In, in our mind, we would think that Jesus would have rolled from the grave. And the first thing he would do, he stepped up and said, Pilate, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't save me from the mob. And then, you know what I mean? I'm going to wake my eye, you out of office. Because that's what you would have did. You would have took him out of office. You would have made sure. Pilate don't serve no more. Probably would have got rid of Caesar and all the Roman soldiers. They would have had to get their retirement check. Especially the one that pierced him in the side at the cross. You would have got him real good. His family, his wife, and all. You know, you would have got all of them. But everything continued the same. When Jesus rolled, Caesar was still ruling Rome, Pilate was still the governor, amen. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, the religious leaders, amen. Even though religious leaders that said crucified him, they were still fighting against theology. They were still doing what they were doing. People went on doing what they were doing. You didn't see a lot of changes, so sometimes, sometimes you don't see the changes right away. But you know the changes is on the way. There was a change among a few of them that who was convinced that Jesus had risen. Amen. The change took place within them. And sometimes we are looking for to see changes in other folks. And we want to see other folks change it. But in order to change other folks, the change got to first take place within who? You. Thank you there, Reverend Ronnie. The change got to take place within you if you want to see the change in somebody else. And many times we want to see changes in the other folk, but there are no changes in us. So there was a change taking place within those that was convinced even though that the government and the, the soldiers and all of those that were around were saying that Jesus did not rise from the dead and there was a lookalike, it was his disciple looking like him. There were those that down in their heart knew what the word of God said and they knew that Jesus had risen. And when they realized and accept the fact that Jesus had lived, had, 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 had risen, they didn't worry about what folks were saying anymore. They didn't listen to what people were saying. They knew that the Savior had risen. Yeah. Oh, thank you. You want to see the world change. You want to see, people want to see the world change. They want to see the abortion clinic uh, taken down. And, you know, they want to see the war stop going on. They want to see, amen, the change in the government. They want to see the change in the political world. You want to see changes, you first need to change within self. Amen. amen. Family need to change. If the family change, then the community will change. If the community change, then the city will change. If the city will change, then the state will change. 
If the state would change, then the government would change. But the change got to start within. Amen. I said the chain got to start where? Yeah. Chain got to start within you. Many times we are looking at others, blaming others. But the problem is self. The text that I read suggests that walking in the spirit, to walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. 1 Peter 2 and 11 said, abstain from fleshly lust, which war, I told you we was in a war against the flesh and the spirit. Didn't I tell you that? Amen. Write that down so you remember that. You can read that. 1 Peter 2 and 11 said, abstain. Amen. Don't, 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 don't get involved in it. Don't use it. Get rid of it. Stay away from it. Abstain from fleshly lust. Because flesh, the love, wars against the, the soul. It wars against the spirit man. There's a war going on. And you got a war going on inside of you, you got trouble. Amen. That's why, that's why people, that your, body, your, body, your body is not built, amen, to, to, for wars. And, but it's built for peace. And when God created it, man, he made him the, Amen. That he could have peace with Christ. And, but when, when these other things come in, it created a war. And that's why it destroys you. Amen. How do we walk in the spirit? By yielding ourselves to the spirit of God. They're yielding ourselves to the spirit of God. You cannot please self and God at the same time. Amen. Come on, I say you cannot please self and God at the same time. Somebody's going to have to take the low seat. Self of God. Solomon said in Proverbs, the third, third, third chapter, verse 6, said, In all of thy ways acknowledge him. In all of your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. In the book of Exodus, God gave Israel a set of laws to live by. Thank God for, amen, the word of God that we can read on a daily basis and find, amen, ways to apply to our life to live by. He was clear in his laws. He was clear that I am the Lord their God and not only that I am the Lord your God, but watch this. I am a jealous God. What do you mean by I'm a jealous God? I must be first in your life. God laid it down before you even entered into the contract. Sister Miller to get ready to get married and the man tell her, I'm a jealous man. You better not be looking at chalk on Sunday morning because I'm jealous. He already laid it down up front. So don't be coming in here grinning at little chalk talking about I didn't know. You know he was a jealous. You know he was a devil when you married. Right. You, you, you know he, he was messed up when you married. But, 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 but I'm using that to identify God. We knew, we knew already that God is a jealous God and he don't want to share his glory to the devil. He don't want to share his glory. God want you. He want all of you. And we get messed up when we use our liberty for freedom that we want to share with God a little bit on Sunday and then on Monday and Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we want to share with somebody else and kind of put him on the back runner. God is a jealous God. He wants all of you. Mm. When, when the children of Israel was in Egypt, there's no question they wanted to leave Egypt. But when they left, they came to, they, 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 
He said, when, when, when you leave, when you leave Egypt, I, I know you want to leave, but when you leave Egypt, can you remain faithful? I know that you want to be saved. No one want to go to hell. If you took a survey and you asked to raise hand and said, how many want to go to heaven? How many want to go to heaven? I believe everybody raised their hand. You had people, how many want to go to hell? I ain't never saw people want to go to hell. You go to the, you catch, you catch the man that, 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 doing everything, living any kind of way. Yeah, yeah, I won't go to hell. He want to go to heaven, but he want to go his way. So, so you don't find people that volunteer saying, I want to go to hell. But they do say they want to go to heaven. Amen? Amen. So, 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 I know that you want to be saved, and I know that you don't want to go to hell, and, 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 and I know that you want to go to heaven, but one of the questions is, is that can you deny self in order to get there? Are you willing to deny self? Can you put self on the back burner and put God first? And when you say that, you're not really hurting self. What you're doing, you're saying, God, I'm putting you first because you're going to take care of self from me. Can you let God take care of you? Amen. Why you put him out front? That's all he asks you to do. It may sound like, it sounds like the preacher is saying, don't do nothing for self. Just throw self away. That's not what he's saying. I'm saying that God know how to take care of you better than you know how to take care of you. Well, thank you, Jesus. The word says, stand fast in the liberty where Christ had made us free. Amen. Christ made us free. Amen. Since he had made us free, then you stand fast there. Now that I'm free, now that I'm saved, now that, amen, God has washed me in the blood, and amen, and the crucified one, and amen, and gave me another opportunity, gave me a chance. He said, walk close to him. Amen. To bring me to a place where he can use me and, 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 and not uh, 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 that, that God can use me, but he cannot use me if I'm out of pocket and I'm not in the place so he can use me. You have to be in the right place so God can use you. Well, thank you, Jesus. Now, the devil is a sophisticated being. Let, let me, I'm not trying to make you happy here. I'm trying to make you use some knowledge, okay? The devil is a sophisticated being. Quit going around thinking that the devil is somebody out, the devil is somebody out there don't know nothing. Tell him, I got, I got it. He, he can't handle me. You know, I got this. The devil, you know what I mean? He the devil. You know what I mean? He can't handle me. You know, y'all, we, we think that way sometimes. Tell me, I'm bad in Christ. The devil, boy, the devil will jack you up. Yes, he will. You go in there, you go in that rain by yourself without the Holy Ghost. Go in that rain. Elder Richard, who, 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 who the baddest boxer right now out there? Ali. Ali, man, Ali been gone. I'm talking about living right now. Who? Mayweather. Go ahead. Go ahead and, go ahead and get in the rain with Mayweather. Tell me you, you about yourself. Go ahead, go, go on in there. He's going to whip you like a rat. <laughs> but with the Holy Ghost. Tell somebody, say, with the Holy Ghost. And with Jesus on my side. And with the anointing on my side. If I got in battle with the devil, if I got in there, the Lord is going to protect me and show me what to do. He's going to guide me, and amen. He might just have me running around the rain for a long time. I might run for about five times, and after a while, he'll get sick and fall down. God's going to direct me if I got the Holy Ghost. But you trying to do this on your own, you're going to get messed up. You cannot deal with the devil on your own. Because he is a sophisticated being. Now, 
well, let me tell you about the devil, okay? The devil is sophisticated. Not only did he transform as a roaring lion, see, he's so sophisticated he can come in different forms. He can come in different forms. But he, he used every available source he can to destroy you. That's his job. You see, he don't mind you coming to church, singing in the choir. He don't remind you doing a dance. He don't remind you playing the music and jumping and dancing all over the place. He don't mind none of that. As long as he can leave you with no joy, no peace, no one to care for you, I'm all alone, I'm giving up. He still wins. You know why he is a sophisticated one? Now, let me tell you now, y'all got to get this. First of all, the devil was cast out of heaven. He was already where you trying to go. He know how good heaven is, so he really don't want you to get there. He was cast out of heaven. His name was Lucifer, which means light bearer. He carried a light bearer. He was the brightest and the most beautiful of the archangel. He rebelled against God, and God cast him to the earth. He was an archangel, the most beautiful. They say he was the most beautiful one that was. Y'all in the mirror trying to get all beautiful with your braids and your, your lich and eyelashes and lifted. The devil already had that stuff beauty. He was already fixed up before you. He was the most beautiful archangel was. He got so pretty and so beautiful and, and looking so good. And he what he was doing. He said, I think I want to move up there and ascend and be greater than God. He got lifted up. It's bad to get lifted up. And when he got lifted up, he got cast down to the earth. Now watch this. Walk with me for a minute. Then God had created man on the earth. God created man. And when God created man in, his, God, in the image of God, he made man to be a chosen ruler over the earth. God created him. He made everything, the animals and everything. But when he made man, he made man in his image to be like God. And then he created him. And then he told him, I want you to rule the earth. And then when he made him to rule the earth, the devil was already trying to rule in heaven, got kicked out of his place in heaven. And now he on the place of the earth. And Jesus said, amen, that he down here on the earth, amen, he down here, which is taking place of uh, ruling the earth now since man sinned. Man gave up his authority, amen, with sin. That's why Jesus had to come and be, be, be redeemed so we can be redeemed back to our rightful place. But in the meantime, there's a war going on with Satan and you, man, on the face of the earth because you represent God and the devil is mad with you because he don't like you taking his place. He don't like that you being in a position of authority. He don't like that God made you in his image. He don't like that God had put you down here to be the ruler of this earth. He don't like that you have the power of God and he'll fight it with you on the earth down here. That's why you face the devil every day because the devil is fighting against you. He mad with you because what God had did for you, God had made way for you. God had healed you. Amen. God had put you down here to be ruler over everything that he created and the devil don't like it. There's a conflict going on. And the conflict is not against you and me, and you and me, and me and you. The conflict is against the devil, amen, and God. And he can't get to God, so he come and get his creation. He come and get man that represent God. Well, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I think when we understand, when we, when we really understand who our enemy is, when we really understand 
who the enemy is, I think we can handle it better. We know that the devil is mad with you because you belong to God and God has created you in his image and made you to serve him. Amen. God has made provision for you and the devil don't like it. And he knows, look oh, over. I say he knows he no match for God. He knows he no match for Jesus. He knows he no match with the Holy Ghost. So he find you if you ain't got the Holy Ghost. He comes at you to destroy you. But the Bible said, great is he that will fit me than he that is in the world. I got the Holy Ghost. So when I got the Holy Ghost, I said, come on, devil. I got the Holy Ghost. I said, come on, devil. I've been washed in the blood of the crucified one. I got the Holy Ghost. God made me in his image. I got the Holy Ghost. I got power to be able to stand. I got power. Say yes. You bring it on, but I'm gonna stand. Yeah! Woo. Hey, hey! Woo. a lot of preachers today and they like to tell y'all look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor uh, they, they tell the neighbor a whole lot of things someone tell your neighbor tell your neighbor to clap your hands they tell your neighbor to get right neighbor but I, I'm not gonna mess with the neighbor this morning now every once in a while I might want to tell the neighbor something but right now you need to look at yourself. Because the neighbor can't get right until the self get right. Oh, y'all ain't gonna like me for this, but the neighbor are looking at you. Don't y'all know that the neighbors are looking at you? You know that time, look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, let's get right. And the neighbor seeing you with a shot of Johnny Walker. Neighbor saw you coming out the marijuana house. Tell me you were getting some medicine, you know. Well, you were just getting high. Yes, yes, yes. The neighbor seeing you. How you going to tell the neighbor something? So I want to tell you this morning say, look at yourself and tell yourself, I'm going to stand in the midst of my trials. I'm going to stand. Regardless of what the devil do. Yeah, glory. For God has made me free. I know I can stand. Because the Holy Ghost is in me. Great is he that was in me. Than he that is in the world. I'm not going to worry. About what the devil is doing. But I. I I'm going to worry about what God is doing within me. Oh, no. 
That's what Apostle Paul said. <laughs> in Romans, the eighth chapter, <laughs> in the eighteen verse, <laughs> so I might be suffering right now. <laughs> But the suffering that I'm going through now uh, would not compare uh, to what the Lord has for me. Uh, so I'm going to endure uh, for just a season. Uh, because I know uh, that uh, in the midnight hour, uh, yes, uh, daylight is on the way. Uh, it's going to be better after a while. You ought to say yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm going through my midnight, my midnight crisis. There is, there's a light that cannot be hid. I can endure the midnight because I know the Lord has a light for me. I can endure the suffering. I know the Lord has a joy for me. Say hey, yeah, yeah. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. But we walk by faith and not by sight. I don't know where I'm going, but Lord, Lord, where you lead me, I, I'll follow. I don't know where you're leading me, but oh Lord, wherever it is, help me to say yes. I'll follow you. You are my God. Take my hand and lead me on. Oh, no. Say yes. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Give God some praise and tell him thank you. Come on, tell him thank you. I'm closing. In the book of Matthew, Jesus fed 5,000. Some were close enough to eat. They ate, and that was it. There was others that were there. They were close enough to feed others. Not only did they eat, but they were able to feed other people. There's one thing that we can, in our lifetime, and I, and I want you to get this, in our lifetime, to be able to receive what the Lord has for us. Another thing is to be able to receive what he has for us and to be able to help somebody else. How many want to help somebody else? Oh, thank you. And there was older just ate. You know, they came to eat, they ate, went on, got a belly filled, and that was it. There was older, others that ate, and they was able to, to feed others. Now, if we read the 14th chapter, uh, Verse 16, Jesus made enough, but he didn't do the, he didn't do the feeding. Jesus just made it happen. Then he told them to serve the others. You see what I'm saying? So, so don't, don't sit back and think the Lord supposed to do everything and you do nothing. He told, told them to now Tell the people to sit down and you serve them, you feed them. I'm the, some of them want, 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 some of them, you know, you got family, they, they want you to cook, then they want you to serve them, and then they want you to clean their plate and wash it for them. We were, we were brought up in my day and time, we were brought up, mom cooked, the children had to clean up. 
and, and, it, and it went around to different one of us. Even I was a boy, I still had a time to wash dishes. I had to wash dishes. Y'all know that? Yeah. And, uh, and um, I probably done told y'all this many times that, that, that I wanted to go to a basketball game. And uh, I didn't have time to wash the dishes with my time to wash dishes. And I took all the dishes, took the food out the dishes, and then I put the dishes up under the cabinet, dirty. And you know, I only had a few minutes before I leave go go to the game. You know, and, and my mom came in there and she wouldn't let me go because I hadn't did my my chores. I hadn't did my dishes. We have a generation now gone anyway. Cause we want to please the children. So I I didn't go. I didn't go. And I, I was supposed to ride with the coach that day. He was going to to referee a game in another town. And he had an accident and lost his life in that accident. My mom would let me go that day because I hadn't washed the dishes. Amen. So I, I, I want to I want to share with you. There are some things that God wants you to do. He's going to do so much, and then he wants you to do some other thing. He provides the food, but you need to serve the food. Are you with me? He said, you give them something to eat. Jesus gave the food to the disciples and said, you give it to the people. And if you want to be used by God, you make yourself available, God will use each of you to be able to help somebody else in this life. Amen. You want, amen, that, that is the greatest feeling in the world that you can help somebody else in this life. In this life, that you can help somebody. Amen. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not in tune to find that squeal and holler so much in my life now. I'm getting older. But I want to be able to deliver something that will help people on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday through their life, that to be able to help them in this life. If I can help somebody in this life, I feel that my work is good. Lord, I want to get closer enough to you. I want to be, I want to get close enough to you that not just to eat for myself. Now, what, hear what I'm saying? I want to get close enough to you not just to be blessed myself. See, somebody, I want to be close enough to you, Lord, that you give me a job. I want to be close enough to you, Lord, that my money will be good and, and not funny. I want to be close enough to you that I get me a new car. I want to be close enough to you that I get me a new house. I want to be close enough to you that I get me some new this. And I want to be close enough to you that I will get healing in my body that I'm not sick and afflicted. I want to get close enough to you that I have peace and joy. Ain't nothing wrong with that. You're supposed to be close enough to him for that. And these are good things. And don't, I'm not putting it down. These are good things. But I also want to be close enough to you that I can let it run off of me and help somebody else. Are you with me? Once I get my joy, I want to see Melody with some joy. Amen. Once I get my healing, I want to see a shock healing in his body. And once I get mine, I want to see Unique look, not looking so sad on Sunday. I mean, like, you know, you know, like she's just so down and out. I don't know why the Lord done left me. I want to see her praising God. Hallelujah! All those pretty strings on her hair. I mean, $500 hairdo. Y'all don't want to praise God for it. <coughs> I'm glad that God, that you, oh, oh God. I, I just praise God that I don't have to use a straightening iron no more. She don't even know what a straightening iron is. She don't know. But, but I bet Sister Billy know. Just praise God. And then when I get blessed, I want to see somebody else get blessed. I want to see. I want. I just want to see. I want to see somebody else get blessed. Man, I'm trying to show you how to go somewhere. 
I'm trying to show you how to get out of the same rut, amen, and move forward because this is the principle of the way God works. God works with you so you can work with somebody else. He don't work with you so you can sit there on your own and not help nobody else. Are y'all with me? Tell the disciples, say, you get the food and now you go feed the other people. That folks don't know what to do, you know, feed them. But you got to be close to him. You got to be close enough so you can take what he has and then distribute it to somebody else. Ah. Hallelujah. David said, I'm close enough that I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, but I fear no evil. Why? Because I'm close to you. Even in the shadow of death, I fear no evil because the Lord is with me. That's close enough that you can tell somebody else when they are in trouble. May the Lord bless you. Let us stand on our feet. God bless you. Stand on your feet. You stand on your feet. Gracious Father, I pray the prayer of faith this morning for your people. I pray deliverance in their bodies. I pray for healing in their life. I pray for deliverance in their families, the struggle that they are dealing with. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Help us rely on you and trust you. Help us to say yes to your will. You have been good to us. You're bringing us out of a very deadly pandemic. You're delivering us, making ways for us, bringing healing into our life. I want to thank you. I want to praise you. Hey! I want to magnify you. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Let your light shine. Hallelujah. In the midst of darkness. Oh, we just give you glory and we give you praise and we thank you. Holy Ghost, I thank you. I pray that every soul that are standing here, they are filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Feel. Feel Lay your hands on yourself and say, feel me. Come on, lay your hands and fill me again. Fill me that I can help somebody else. Fill me. Fill me, Lord. <coughs> Lord. Fill me right now. Holy Ghost. Fill me, Lord. Holy Ghost. Fill me, Lord. I thank you Hallelujah. for being filled with the Holy Ghost. Say the blood of Jesus again. Blood of Jesus. Hey! Hallelujah. Woo. 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 Go ahead. 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 Go when you're by yourself, just say, it's real simple, Lord, fill me with your Holy Ghost. And just as sure as you do that, God will overshadow you. You don't have to be afraid because when he comes, he comes to do a good work. Amen. And we praise God. want to thank you for watching on today. Amen. want to remind you, you got to always be thankful. Be kind in your spirit and thank you for sharing with this ministry today. Let's give them a hand clap as they're leaving. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah.